Okay, guys, so this uh, video is just a quick video to show the large deformation or nonlinear calculation for a cantilever beam. And then at the end of the video, we'll make some important observation that I see many times happening in a prana. So let's see. This first to create the geometry. Let's just create a quick line. Whatever, let's do 60 inches long. Uh, now we're gonna create the material properties. We're gonna select some aluminum. Uh, let's do six and zero point three. Okay. So I guess this is done. Now properties new. So for this video, I'm just gonna test the beam property. And remember that in FEMA, there's only one property of beam and is based basically on the, uh, what is called a thin structure. So I would mix, and let's make it just one by one to make it simple up and down uh, okay cancel all right so mesh mesh control size along curve i think we said that was 60 so let's take 60 elements to make it simple and now we're gonna have a model constraint oops what happened here mesh geometry curve Okay, okay, it should not matter, but let's just say it's on the Y. All right, so now model, constraint, nodal, is cantilever here, so we're gonna fix it. And then we're gonna apply a load at the other end, so model, load, nodal, so it's cantilever. So, I don't know what would be a good value, but let's start maybe by 20,000. If we need to change it, we can change it. All right, so now comes a bit. The difference is that we need to come here to model, load, only analysis. And this is important that basically just need some understanding. If we solve using the static solution, we're gonna break this into, we're gonna break the load into how many sections? So let's say into 20, okay? So basically you divide this by 20 would be what? Would be uh, 10,000, would be 1,000, and then will be whatever, 10,000, uh, 1,000, 2,000, so on until 20,000. If you want a more detail, you can go here. Generally, I come over here and say all, here, displacement for the convergence. Don't go too small because the program might give you some issues here. And this one, this is generally the default value use. Okay, you can do this in the solution procedure here when you run the analysis, so you can do it now. I'd rather do it here because at least it's safe. Okay, so now we come here to the analysis, manage, new. And here you choose the solution 10, nonlinear static. And as you go through the different menus here, you see, uh, not, not this one. Oh yeah, here, use load options. You see it's basically the same thing as before. Okay, and now you can click analyze. So hopefully this is a good loading. I didn't test it before doing this video. Okay, so I did pause it for a few seconds, but actually went pretty fast. So you should have here, and this should be all the different loading, okay? So the fastest way to visualize here the data is you click over here, 
And then we're gonna create a new one here, new data series. So this is taking a time. Okay, so we can put a title, but here what's important is to say versus set. I use that one generally. We're gonna look at the vertical translation and at which location at the tip. And we click okay. And we should have a figure here showing up. Okay, so that's the figure you see. This is nonlinear. Actually, the load might be a little bit too much to show what I want to show, but uh, maybe I go to another program. But basically, you see, if the deformation was linear, you would just have a straight line over here. And here, what is showing is that after a certain deformation, okay, the beam becomes stiffer. So now the deformation is 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 not as uh, going up linearly. So from here to here, you can say that you see the deformation is linear. So if we extend this line, it will be this one. So for example, for this type of loading, this will be 0.2 times 20,000. So it will be for 2,000. If we did not have the Nolly analysis, probably it will be what? It will be all the way up. So let's say about what, about 100. However, because of the nonlinear is about just 51 inches. and here we go to the 20,000. This line here will be very, 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 very high. So, okay, so that's basically the nonlinear analysis. So, let me go to another program to show things a little bit faster. And that program will be here, MATLAB. I think this is my personal code. So you see, this is 60, one, one. It's about the same beam, but it's a little bit different approach to resolve. We're gonna come here and this is gonna run. This is a different loading. Uh, maybe let's make it smaller. Uh, all right, maybe 100. And this is basically gonna break the load in 20. This should be pretty fast. Okay, so you see, all right, so what I wanna show on this figure here is, is something important, is that when do you know that the deformation is large? So in this case, you see, this is basically the total deformation, vertical deformation divided by the length. So if you multiply this by 100, basically it would be the percentage of the vertical deformation with respect to the length of the beam. So in this case, you can say here, I mean, up to this one, maybe, maybe let me run with a smaller load. So I would just stay in this region. All right, so let's just put here 40 and let's see what happened. So basically what I wanna show, this is what I wanna show, is that you see, this would be the percentage of vertical deformation with respect to the length. So when does this starts to becoming really nonlinear? So let's see in this case, so that would be about what? Almost, let's say 0.3 or 30% of the vertical deformation. So uh, you need to use nonlinear analysis when the vertical deformation, so up or down, is at least 30% of the length of the beam for this case, okay? And this is because this beam is pretty long, all right? So now let's see what happened if we change the length of the beam. So let's do two cases. In one case, we're gonna go longer. In another case, we're gonna go shorter, all right? So let's say we go to 80. So the deformation should increase.
All right, there we go. So this will be 80, and now you see the deformation. So this is actually in blue is the linear deformation. And in this case, you see that if you make it longer, actually, you can see that this value even can go up. All right. In here, they say you see it's about 30%. But if you want to use this one, it will be about 40%. But basically, the longer the beam, the larger is the displacement or the percentage of the dis percentage of the overall deformation, vertical deformation to a length that you need to use in order to use nonlinear deformation. So it's about what 30% on this one. Okay, I think it was 30% on the other one. Maybe let's go a little bit bigger. Oops, that's not what I want. Let's go here. Let's go maybe put this one to 90. The only thing I'm scared now is that maybe the load might be too much. So let me reduce a little bit the load to 20 and run. Otherwise, we're not going to have enough values at the lower end. All right, so now let's say here, the value is about, what, 21%, but here this one is not that bad, it will be about 30%, and this will be about 43.85%, okay? So it's still between 30 and 40. I was expecting to see it coming higher, but it wasn't coming that high. Now let's go to a shorter one, so let's say to 40, but this time we're probably gonna have to increase the load so let's go back here, let's say to 100. And let's see what happens. All right, so now you see that actually, you see now if you look at the deformation, the shorter it is, now we go up to, let's say, before it becomes nonlinear, it's about 32, 33%. Okay, so I'm gonna stop running this, this program. But basically, what I want to show is that there's not a clear rule to know when do you need to use the nonlinear analysis for a cantilever beam. Okay. Um, what I want to point out is that it's really justified to use the nonlinear analysis for a cantilever beam because you see the deformation starts about around what, like 28, 25, 30%. So as long as the deformation, this deformation is about, let's say about 20% to be safe of the length of the beam, looks like the um, linear analysis is sufficient, okay? But that is not the case when you start running on uh, different boundary conditions. So before finishing this video, I just wanna point out two things. I think it's always important, guys, that to learn more about the different solution, you go to the NX National Solution. Here, they will give you a bunch of information, all right? I know it looks ugly, but if you really want to understand what, you really want to understand what's going on, it's important that you start looking at least at what is happening. And then I also wanted to show you here, this is a paper that I found online. And basically it talks about a few of the things I was telling you, okay? So the other one, which they talk on this paper is that, okay, so the beam element is based on a slender beam theory. So basically you can only use this beam when the ratio of the thickness to the length is at least 10, okay? If it's shorter than 10, then the beam is not gonna be accurate anymore because we're gonna go, the main force is not bending anymore, it becomes shear. And there's a phenomenon called shear locking that will happen and it will not give you accurate results. But at the same time, the beam element will only be accurate, let's say between, if the ratio of the thickness to the length is between 10, and then maybe I will say can be 200. But if the beam start deforming, in, uh, so in this case, the deformation is pretty clear, but let's say it start deforming very high, this should be fine. But if you start deforming and start curving, even the formulation is not correct anymore, okay? And there's actually no formulation on uh, NASTRAN that I can take care of that 
to my best knowledge. I think you need to go to uh, extension authority. And I don't think the, uh, at this time, at least FEMAP has the correct element, all right? The other thing is that uh, I will post a solution on YouTube, but if uh, I will also include all these uh, files over here and the papers, and generally you will find all that information in this website over here after you clean up FEMAP. Uh, you can find here, you see like supporting files and you will find for all different types of videos. All right, so that will be it for this video over here.